just so okay. we know we got that. Okay, okay, recording is in progress, so it's do not progress. say fuck or bugger. <laughs> or say it all, or say it yeah, all. say it all, cool. <laughs> oh, Carl, well, you know, I get it, man. It's a, it was a rough work day today, but uh, we're here. We end of your day. We made it through. Relax. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've only got three interviews to do tonight, but you're luckily that you're the first one, so I'm fresh. fresh. I am keen. <laughs> I am enthusiastic. Ask me again in three hours' time. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that's rough, man. Uh, yeah, well, I know it's, it's part of the course. You know, I yeah. should have used it by now. Uh, you know, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy talking to uh, to people about me and what I'm doing. You know, ultimately. Have you ever had an absolutely uh, horrible question, like something that just really puts you off? Uh, no, usually, usually people are quite respectful in the yeah. questions that they ask. Uh, and if someone asks me a question that I do not really feel comfortable or, or want to answer, I will just tell them to uh, just skip, skip it. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, that, that hasn't happened. That has happened in the past. Uh, it usually relates to when people continually, uh, continually ask me questions about my former band when I'm here to promote mo Memoriam, not yeah. what I did 30 years ago. Uh, obviously, it's part of what I do. Uh, what I, what, where I'm at now, and I do incorporate it in my answers regularly, but I don't like to, you know, bang on and specifically answer questions relating to my history and what I've done in the past. Has that gotten that. better? I mean, you guys have so many albums now. I would imagine the first one people wanted to drain on about yeah. it, but now, absolutely, yeah, we're yeah, on the fifth, yeah. Right? I mean, this is it. This is it. That's the whole, the whole, the whole thing is, you know, in memoriam. You know, we are born from the ashes of, of what happened in the past. You know, we without without that kind of historical precedence, I wouldn't be in the privileged position to be able to do what I'm doing now. You know, so it has acted as a step ladder for me to enable me to carry on doing the thing that I love doing, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of what I've achieved in the past and would never decry that. And people love it, you know, and I can't take that away from people. But it does get a little bit monotonous when people continually uh, try and compare you. You know, it's, it's kind of like a, a discourse, a debate that you can never win because you, you're either too too similar to what to both throw or not similar enough or too <laughs> yeah. different you know and, and the, the, the discourse is like well we're not even in that same game you know we, we we've attempted you know from day one to, to to kind of remove ourselves from that discourse and kind of create our own self of sense of identity which is yeah obviously it's taken a while for us to do that but i think you know now five albums in uh I think we finally managed to um, shake those shackles and people have, I think we did that, yeah, by album number three in reality. Yes, I think yes. people started to accept uh, who, us for who we are and what we're doing and and realise that, that, you know, we are, we're not a bolt through a tribute band. You know, we're not a, a cover band. We're not going to sound, we want to sound different. We want our own sense of identity. It's taken a while for us to develop that. And, um, you know, we're here now and, and and we're alive and we're doing it and we're moving forward. And it just it just gets a little bit monotonous when people bang on about bolt throw all the time to me, you know. And sometimes I have to just turn around and say, Well, fuck you, for fuck's sake. Get over it. <laughs> Get over yourself. It's done. <laughs> Move on. That's what I've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's got to be worse too nowadays because I'm sure back when you were in, you know, both throw and then those older those older days, you didn't have the internet, and now absolutely you've got absolutely, people yeah. with, like you said, that have all these different opinions. I'm sure if you go on, I don't know, YouTube. You're gonna have half the comments saying not bolt thrower enough, and the other half saying not whatever enough, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 just a, a debate that we just try not to get engaged with. It's just it's pointless. It's ever 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 evolving. And that shit, you're right. You know, when we first started out, this, you know, it was the only communication or feedback you got was from people that actually took the time to send you a letter. Um, you know, uh, you know, or you know, a a mainstream radio show like John Peer or something like that. You know, that, that was the only time of times. Uh, so the internet, everyone, everyone has an opinion. That's fine. Do you read uh, any of it? But yeah, the keyboard, what I saw keyboard worries out there. But yeah, you learn to rise above all that. And kind yeah, of, yeah. The, the, the key uh, to what we do is we just do it for ourselves. At the end of the day, we enjoy doing it. And uh, everything else on top of that is just a little bit of a bonus. Really, it's quite quite nice that you know we have that ability that other people like it. 
that's great. Uh, some people don't. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah. you know, people that do like it like it a lot, and people buy our records and support us and come to gigs. And you know, that's all. I'll still be doing this. We'll still be doing this if we were just in the rehearsal room, you know, uh, drinking beer with me mates, uh, banging out punk rock covers on a Friday evening between seven and nine o'clock, uh, and having a laugh, just doing it. That yeah, that would be fine, you know. I, as long as we. we I continue to enjoy doing it for what it is. That's the key. That's the bottom line. And that's what it should be all about for anyone, really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's so, great. Was that, was, that, was that a question? Was that a question? Did I just <laughs> create my own question there? <laughs> I, mean, that's, uh, I feel like you can feel that, though. You can feel that in your guys' music. I mean, you guys have been pumping out albums. The intensity is there. It feels, uh, it feels fresh and invigorated, especially, like you said, man, since Requiem on, it's just been... Uh, yeah, the energy yeah, man, it's there and Absolutely, it's, it's yeah. so cool. Well, to hear I think that. definitely by Requiem. So the first couple of albums we were kind of trying to find ourselves, find our own sense of identity, break away from you know things we did in the past. And it was yeah, quite a difficult process to do that. But I think by album number three, with you know, th uh, three albums under our belt, with you know, particularly with, with Dan Seagrave as our in-house artist, we started to develop a kind of a sense of imagery around what we were doing, which worked really, really well. But then when we clicked in with Russ Russell down at Parlour Studios, we found that kind of that kind of almost that missing X factor to 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 mm -hmm. success. The, the blueprint was kind of almost complete. But you know, um, so we've used that. Yeah, you know, we we are very much creatures of habit. Once we find something we know that look, works and we like, we stick to it because and we build on that. You know, we're not we're not afraid to try out new things and push forward and experiment a little bit you know that's that's the creativity of what we do and that's the the, the beauty of making music is having that ability to try yeah. and do different things but yeah as you say we are for uh, we're knocking them out at a phenomenal rate you know five albums in seven years isn't too bad for uh us people in the autumn of our lives yeah <laughs> right uh, well that's what i was gonna say you said just trying new things and all of that and one of the things that I really have loved about Memoriam is, uh, I mean, we know you for your war lyrics, and that's, I mean, God, that's, that's, I mean, that's why we I'm all always have your war lyrics, lyrics, right? Well, I, I, I mean, if I start, if you start, if I drop your war lyrics, there'd be, there'd, there'd be, oh, it'd be chaos. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> but it's cool the yeah, way that you've been able to integrate like songs about love and peace. And, and it'd, be, <laughs> yeah. it'd be terrible. Uh, there'd be riots on the streets, people burning the records. <laughs> right, uh, but yeah, it's something that I've done for thirty odd years, isn't it? You know, it's it's my default button, you know, and and I know that I can write them in my sleep, really, and I enjoy it. I enjoy that, you know. I've been doing it for thirty years. It's been interesting actually, because. You know, uh, the, the songs about war, which was predominantly the only theme of the previous band I was in. Um, you know, there were songs kind of like historical war, wars in the future, kind of like, like futuristic, kind of, you know, kind of ephemeral kind of wars, the war inside, yeah, the psychological war, war per se. So I've retained that, you know, I've moved forward, retained that important element of what I do. Also, with Memoriam, I... I'm very pleased to introduce some other thematics. So, you know, you may have noticed that I've actually introduced quite a strong thread of political social comments yeah. in the uh, the lyrics that I write on a lot of albums. And, yeah, as I have now, I'm knocking on a little bit, I am very pleased or like to write songs which are generally about life in general, you know, taken from experience, you know, about life, joy, sorrow, grief, you know, moving forward in your life, not looking back or looking back. You know, so those are the three elements that I tend to write for Memoriam. You know, war, as you pointed out, being one of the predominant ones. Specifically on this album, even more so than maybe ones in the past, because really I draw reference to the world around us when I'm writing lyrics. You know, I kind of look to what's happening in the world, what's affecting me, what I think is important mm. to make social comment about. And there just so happens to be prospective World War Three <sighs> kicking off on our doorstep down the road in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, so that has had a very, very strong influence in an inspirational effect on my lyrical writing context on this album. It seems kind of ironic in many ways that I've written songs about war for 30 years. And at this point, in 2022, 23, uh, those lyrics seem to bear more relevance now 
to the world around us than they have done ev evident in the past because they are specifically relating to something that's happening right here, right now. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it seems that all the, the social, political commentary, the songs of experience and the songs about war are kind of all merged into one big conglomeration with the lyrics on, on this album because they all tie in together very tightly due to the the issues that exist in the world around us at this point. Yeah, I, that's what I, I was going to say. I really love about Memoriam, though, is the way that you do tie all that together. We've got the older themes, like you said, but you take in the new ones. But when you when you do the the more political stuff or when you talk about something with inside, it still fits. You know, it still yeah. has that same motivating component or that that driving, you know, goes with the music so well. And that's what I love about it. Absolutely. Um, it's always inspired by the music. You know, I'm, I'm never one. I can never sit down and write a, a lyrical tome without hearing or being moved by, uh, you know, it's all about the riff, the bottom line, the core to any successful song or band really is the riff. And that's what drives me. When I hear a specific riff, I kind of visualise a kind of timing structure within that. And that's where the words and the lyrical structure and timing comes and then the words fit in uh, to that process. That's the way I've always written. It's always always written in that in that way. I think most people do. Yeah, mm. I, mean, I don't think there are many lyricists that write uh, an epic set of lyrics and then fit it to music. It's always the other way around from, well, that's from my, what I know. Yeah. That works best for me. And, uh, you yeah, know, one of the great things about, um, particularly about these last two albums that we've done, which is different from what we've done previously, there's a few, quite a few issues that are different. But from my lyrical perspective is that maybe the first three albums we did were within a year. We did them at a very, very fast pace. That was what we were trying to do. Then COVID came along, which kind of like impacted our, our ability to, to do it so quickly. So we had a bit of a, a longer time scale to write and pre-produce the songs within. Now, in that time scale, the extra six months that we had, I sat down and I wrote the lyrics. I restructured the lyrics. I rewrote the lyrics. So I was completely happy with them. But most importantly, I went over to riff central studios which is scott's studio mm. guitarist uh and i demoed them i demoed the vocals which is something i've never done in the past ever you know in 30 odd years of doing it, i've never wow. always delivered the vocals in the studio when i'm recording them changed and chopped them and changed them around whilst recording them so you know i wasn't really sure so yeah when you're writing lyrics or words you've got an idea in your head until you actually deliver them you don't know if it's going to work or not so this kind of an element of being able to demo them in advance was an absolute godsend for me. You know, it was a real great, um, grand breaking moment because I then knew all the words I had were right, were in place. I knew the structures mm. and the timings of them. So when we actually went into the album, to, is the studio to record them, this was on the last album to the end and yeah. this album, Rise to the Power, um, I knew what I had to do. So all I had to do in the studio was concentrate entirely, 100%, on the delivery of the vocals. So I had nothing else to worry about, just purely focus on the delivery. And as a result of that, I think they've come out a lot stronger. Yeah, I agree. That's that's cool. That, that seems like that would make a huge difference. Um, yeah, it does. Yes. Um, what about uh, the you've been doing this for a long time with the lyrics, you know, how you've changed it. What has been maybe even just the hardest one lyrically, either whether it was to write the lyrics or to match it to the music, you know, across the whole span of anything you've done, what's the hardest one? Um, oh, well, I'd like, I'll probably point out to um, the opening track of this here new album, Rise to Power, which is uh, never forget, never again, open brackets, Six Great million song. dead, closed brackets. There's a song about the Holocaust. Um, now that, for me, is a song that I've tried to write on and off for about the past 15, 20 years. It's been one of those songs that I've really thought, right, I want to do a song about the Holocaust. But whenever I sat down and tried to write it to a certain song, I don't even have any mind to write it to, it just never worked. You know, the, the, the lyrical content just didn't seem strong enough. It didn't give the subject matter enough um, emotive justice. You know, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty harrowing kind of like subject matter. And you know, you've got to do it justice, it's, you know, you've got to really think about it. But I, we actually are 
Yeah, it's around about this time last year when I actually wrote the lyrics to that. It was around about the Holocaust Memorial um, Day, which is every year around about 23rd of January. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of content on social media, a lot on, on the television, a lot of documentaries, uh, which were from people that experienced it, yeah, you know, first-hand accounts of uh, the Holocaust, you know, from, from all sides. Uh, and so I managed to draw a lot of uh, inspiration. Um, just a lot of it, I took some to the lyrics, you know, straight from what the people said and managed to hone it into this track. Uh, and really, I only had, I only could do that because when I heard the track, it's got, it's, it's got such a melancholic kind of tone to it uh, that it really fitted really well. I knew, knew automatically that this was the one. So after attempting to write this song for 15, 20 years, finally, mm. finally got it in the bag and finally got around to do it. I'm really pleased with the way uh, it's come out in the end. And, you know, the fact that it's the opening track on the album, you know, it shows its strength. And, yeah, I'm really proud of that one. In particular, more, you know, in particular, I'm very proud of managing to do that. You know, it's a, something that I feel is important to... Uh, you know, to 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 make make note about because oh know, yeah, so well, you've as, got as, band... as the years go by, that's their stories get lost because yeah. they're all you know passing away and, and we're losing those kind of like real stories. So yeah, it's something that needs to be kept alive, you know. And uh, so for me to to write something about that and pass those concepts and ideas on is very important for me to do that. So yeah, that that, that in particular would be the one that I say was I've struggled with to write for a long time, but now I have finally finally done it so yeah, yeah I congrats can, can, and it's one of the one of my favorites on. for sure on the album i mean I it's, it's on, yeah. such a great track yeah. and it's great i'm quite I mean, i'm quite chuffed with the fact i got the, the words million <laughs> to write to rhyme with children so <laughs> that, that, that was kind of uh, that was a, that was a, a moment that was like, yeah very good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's great it's great well and that's cool i mean it's great to have uh, a band that's highlighting that aspect of it as opposed to, I, you know, I love digging into underground metal and all this different stuff and, and black metal and stuff. And I feel like every week I find a band that is focusing on the opposite, you know, the nationalist socialist type of stuff. And, um, yeah. you know, whether it's outright or it's people that are, you find out there, those it, people that are tied to stuff like they've that. Got associations or they're flirting with the, with the, uh, yeah. kind of like the, the imagery of it all. Yeah. Well, that's, I, you know, that's what I'm directly opposed to, you know, I'm, I'm quite, quite a strong staunch, um, anti-fascist, uh, in my uh, opinion, always have been, yeah. uh, maybe didn't come out so much, you know, to the front with my former band, but yeah, I've always come from that kind of like left kind of field of, of thinking, you know, and, uh, so yeah, I'm just lucky that I have that ability to kind of like, you know, Get on my soapbox and uh, and pontificate about these things with memoriam, which is uh, you know, we all come we we come from a you know kind of punk kind of anarchist kind of background when we first started out. That's the music that inspired us. So you know, those roots are deep within us, and it's great to have the ability to unleash those kind of like old yeah. uh, old themes that are still within my mindset. You know, and yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah the the. I think sometimes sometimes people give this national socialist kind of black metal a bit more credit than it deserves. You know, I think it's uh, it's not that big, really. No, <laughs> you know, uh, it's not that good either. Uh, uh, but yeah, but I'm directly opposed to that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's that's my uh, that's my bag. That's my stance. That's my position. Always has been. Always will be. Yeah, no surprise no there. Pass no around. No <laughs> pass around. Well, you said so with, with with your political beliefs. Did that all come kind of from the music you were taking in, or was it family as well? Because I mean, a lot of it does seem to be a lot of people kind of pull that from uh, music if they were into the punk scene or specific yeah. music scenes. It does kind of have a power on people. It seems. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we obviously you know coming from the UK. You know, there's a historical kind of aspect. The war, you know, aspect has always been there. You know, my parents were, you know, young uh, in the teens, late, late teens in the, uh, in the in the Second World War. My grandfather fought in the First World War. So although that kind of, that kind of theme of war prevails and is in, you know, our, our mindset, you know. Um, but, yeah, the political aspect very much comes from, you know, getting into bands like Crass, you know, Antisex, Amoebics, you know, all those kind of like Amico punk bands uh, that emerged in the late 
mid to late eighties. Uh, which really, you know, that's I kind of got into that. That's what formulated my sense of identity, my uh, my passion, and got me into it. Really got me into the music per se. So yeah, that's 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 where it all comes from. That that kind of ideology that uh, that comes along hand in hand with that that music, you know, and that's that kind of stays with you. You know, it's, it's part of your roots, part of who you are. So uh, that's where I am. That's who I am. That's where yeah. I am now. Do uh, were people maybe who you know followed you from bolt thrower followed along from memoriam i would imagine there were some people that like maybe didn't know that part of you since it wasn't a direct lyrical theme were there people that were i don't know offended or said forget this band because of what they're singing about or yeah yes yes <laughs> i quite a few, I had a few of them and a few of them were quite uh quite spe- <laughs> there's one, one guy in particular that was really kind of like offended kind of uh yeah he, he kind of he was a, very much a pro- maga Pro Trump, kind of like you know, Republican, and then when I pulled out my um, fuck this, let's go shopping Obama style with my Barack Obama shopping bag, he, 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 he offended me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, of course, there's there's that, there's that, but you know, I think majority of people, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really out there to um, to win hearts and minds. You know, I'm there to sure. affirm. Uh, the beliefs and mindsets of the people that think in the same way that I do. You know, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to change people's opinions and the way they think politically. But you know, I'm there here to just pontificate and stand up for what I think is right, and you know, align myself with the people of similar mindsets. You know, yeah. that's that's the key, really. Give them strength, give them power, and um, we shall rise to power together. <laughs> so I did there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what would, I know you guys don't tour a lot outside of the UK. Um, what if you had a, I don't know, there's certain, I I remember there was a festival that I've seen full of just shady bands with a lot of those, you know, fascist types of ties. I, I imagine the answer to this, but if you, if you were offered a slot on a band on a tour where, or a tour or a festival or where, you know, where certain bands were whether they're promoting certain things or they have ties, would you do that? Or would you take a kind of a stand against that by not, or how would you approach something like that? I don't, yeah, not in do a band, I don't know. Them. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've had that in the past, you know, there's been a few festivals that have, have approached us and asked us if you want to play and we look at the lineup and go, there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to get anywhere near that stink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah we, we do have standards. We have morals. We have, we have kind of our codes yeah. of behavior. You know, uh, we, we do question, Sometimes, you know, there were, I think, uh, I think we played, there was one last year we played and we were kind of like, I mean, in Ireland, because there's a few bands on there that we weren't quite sure of. Uh, well, that was Dark Easter. Uh, but we got there, you know, the, uh, the promoter himself was a, a staunch anti fascist, and the bands that I had my concerns about turned out to be really nice people, and they weren't they weren't Nazis at all. I can't remember what band it was, to be perfectly honest. It was a, it was a Canadian band. Can't remember, uh, yeah. but yeah. Um, so yeah, we we do. You know, if 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 there's a there's a that's an that's an automatic red flag. That's never yeah. that's never going to happen. You know, but yeah, I say we we are very selective in the shows that we do, which is something you know. Well, we've we've moved on the ethos that we kind of have retained from you know what we did in the past. We with uh, my former band, uh, you know, I've taken elements of that that work really well, and, and being uh, be, being selective about what we do um, works well for us. You know, we as I say, we're not a band that's ever going to jump on a tour bus and go, go on an extended tour for 30 dates. You know, I, I really, at this point in my life, that's the last thing I want to do. It, it, yeah. it would kill me. <laughs> it would kill me. Yeah. Uh, so we do things on our own, on, on our own terms. We, we, you know, we manage a lot of things and, and promote ourselves. We organise a lot of our own shows through directly through promoters. Uh, we just signed up to uh, Route One with Ben Ward uh, from Orange Goblin. He's labelled only because we know Ben and we know he'll, he'll put us in the right places. Open up a few doors, maybe. But yeah, generally speaking, we are a uh, we are weekend warriors, and we're proud of that, and it works for us. Yeah, you know, for, for, I don't particularly want to play the arse end of nowhere on a Tuesday night to thirty people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've done that in the past, and I don't at this point. I, I'm, that doesn't really hold any yeah. sense of glory to me. So yeah, it's weekends mainly. But you know, saying that, it is virtually every other weekend. You know, which fits in nicely with our work life. You know, responsibilities. You know, I'm I'm a father. I've got two young children. I've got a job. 
I've got a mom that's got dementia. So there's lots of responsibilities and things at, at home that are more well, as important, you know, more important than, than being in a band. So, you know, going out and doing it every other weekend suits us fine. I think the same applies to our fan base to a certain extent as well. You know, they're from the same kind of thing. They only, I don't, I, I very rarely would go out and see a band on a Tuesday night. You know, it's weekends yeah. really when I go and yeah. see bands. Like really I'll do it, point. but it's always rough. It's never. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's got to be something really special uh, yes. to, to pull me out on a weekday. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, that's the way it works. It rolls for us and we're happy with that, you know, and it, it kind of works well. So we're going to keep on doing that. So, yeah, I mean, financially, logistically, all these issues, you know, have to come into effect when we make our decisions. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably not very highly likely that we will ever get ourselves beyond the uh, the, re- the realms of the European super state, sure. which we are no longer part of. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask a question about Scott, your uh, Who? guitarist. The, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so many great riffs, so many great ideas. Um, and especially on these last two so much uh, a lot of variety what where does he i know he's younger than you guys does he have you know it, what how does him, his influences compare with your guys is, is it similar yeah, different it's got, it's got a lot more energy than we, we have he's a young young whippersnapper <laughs> at 45 or something like that <laughs> yeah it's generation you know, so he has he has got a different sphere of influence you know we i say previously said me me and frank and uh, spike you know we all come from that old punk kind of background where he's more influenced heavily by say the mid 90s technical melodic death metal scene mm. you know uh monstrosity things like that. he likes you know Devin townsend you know for personally no idea never heard of any of them um not my bag not my thing but yeah, yeah he, he's heavy so, so for me when i hear stuff like that he does influence them it's new to me i think oh that's good uh, mm-hmm. um, so yes that kind of that combination of different influences really really works and yeah it's potentially what makes you know memoriam the band it is but yeah i thought i think that um scott's uh impact and his influence on, on the band it cannot be understated because yeah, he is an absolute riff monster uh he lives he lives for writing riffs. That's 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 all he does. You know, basically, he'll, he'll go to work. He'll come home, to it, maybe not. Straight into the studio, and every night you'll see him. You know, if you follow him on social media, you'll see him there live, live casting, writing music. Mm. Every every night he's continually writing music. And that's I think that's really given us the the drive. Maybe he's the, you know the major driving factor of why we've been able to push forward at such a fast pace is purely through the the creative output that Scott produces, you know, he's, he's, you know, we've got a million dollar riff vault, as we call it, which is just absolutely rammed, rammed full of riffs. So much so that we actually went to his studio last weekend to write and structure album number six. This one's wow. not out yet. Album number five's not out yet, but we've <laughs> already got album number six ready to, to work on to go in the studio and record it maybe towards the end of this year. So, you know, and that's purely because Scott is such a prolific songwriter. You know, he writes for us. He writes for his other band, As the World Dies. He writes for a little project that me and him got going called h Drive Project. So, you know, he could write, I mean, you know, 20 albums, no problem. So, yeah, there's, there's lots and lots of fire left in the old engine and plenty of material for us to pilfer from the uh, the million dollar riff felt, uh, if needs be. I know uh, in the past I've heard you mention that you may only do the six albums. You know, you got the two trilogies. Is that? Are you still thinking that might be the end, or keeping it open? Well, that was the, that was the plan. That that was the plan. <laughs> but you know, best laid plans always go amiss. So yeah, we just we're gonna yeah we got we got enough going on, and really we thought, well, you know, okay, we'll see how it goes. After album number six, let's see where we're at. I think the bottom line is, though, if you're still enjoying doing it and still people try to hear it, you know, and we still want to go out there and do gigs, then why stop? You know, as I started, as I started off this interview saying, if you if you're in the key to 
success or key to you know anything in life that is you got to enjoy it you know and uh once you stop enjoying it then that's the point where you should stop doing it so many so many so many bands you know i mean you know but so many bands you see just going through the motions these days uh, as if there's you know because there's nothing else from they can do but there's, yeah. you know life is massive there's lots of other things you can do if she yeah, is end when you leave band. uh i know that i wasn't i i left uh the music kind of thing for about for about 10 years, you know, and, and lived a life. I always kind of missed it. I was always called Carl Bolter, even though I wasn't in the band. <laughs> uh, and uh, so for me, you know, it's been great because I've, I've, I, the way I see it, I've had three bites of the cherry, you know, the bite of the pie, whatever you call it. You know, so initially when I first started in Bolter in 1987, eight, you know, just purely through chance because I, you know, drove the band. No, through, through no skill or ability, I just got to join the band through default because I knew them I could drive. Uh, <laughs> and then I left, obviously. Then I rejoined it again in 2013, something like that. I don't know, maybe maybe 2006, five. I don't know. It's a long time ago, 2003. Had a few years out. And then it, then when it folded, started Memoriam. So the way I see it, I had three, you know, three bites of doing this. And it's been, yeah, it's been a straight, incredible journey. And I've enjoyed every minute of it, probably enjoying it no more now than I ever have done because, you know, I appreciate it for what, I, what it is, you know, and uh, and long may that last. It's been great. So, yeah, never say never, but we'll, we'll see what happens when we get to 2024 and album number six is out and uh, we've gigged with it and I'm pretty sure there's more stuff to come there. Good. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Um, we'll keep on playing until we got our <laughs> Zimmer frames. <laughs> um, yeah, with uh, we, you were mentioning Scott and how much he's uh, contributed, and we talked a lot about variety and and kind of each album just kind of spreading out a little bit more. Is there anything, whether it's something Scott's written or talked about, or or parameters that you place on the band where you're like, we don't want to do that, or we're going to keep that out of it, or is it yeah. just open? Are we going to get clean <laughs> yeah. vocal, Carl? Well, yeah, Are we going to get I, rapping, Carl? You know, what's we, out of the... There we go, yeah. There's an idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, I always... You know, I, I'm, I, as you know, I've mentioned, I'm not particularly a big massive fan of Black Metal. Okay. Uh, and I never thought, I mean, we're not having anything like that. But however, there is a riff on the last album, or one or two, uh, specifically in, in the track All Is Lost, which is sounds a bit black metal so yeah so, so it, it never, kind of, i'm always like we're always kind of open to the we, we let him keep the over technical stuff for each other band as the world dies uh, you know that that's so if, if it gets overly technical it's, it's all about the groove it's all about the riff that's old school death metal when it re reams off into techno prog He's got other outlets for that. He can he can use that in there. And there's a lot of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's got plenty of out, out avenues and outlets for every everything that he comes up with, you know. And uh, yeah, I think one of the things we haven't touched on is, is uh, one of the big impacts on the last two albums is Spike, the new drummer. You know, his yeah. ability and what he brings to the band. Uh, with no disrespect to Well, he's my yeah my oldest best mate, and I'll never uh, decry that. Yeah, but what. Um, Spike brings a, a different dimension to his playing style, you know, and, and I think that's added to the band and yeah, pushed us onto another level, which which is you know great to see, you know, especially on this new album when he's been with us for an ex you know nearly two years now. With, with the last album, we we got a taste of what he could do, yeah, you know, especially with the last track as my heart grows cold. There's a few Neil Pert moments in there, and. Uh, I think, you know, because he'd only been with us for a few weeks before we went into the studio, he didn't have much time to learn it. So he which pretty much followed what we, we played on, you know, on Superior Drum, on the, on the drum patterns. He followed that to a certain extent, but put his little first style in here and there. But with this new album, he's had the ability to to listen and work on it and really has come through to the, to the front. And that's really one of the key uh, big signatures which makes all these tones and textures and this style that makes this work. And has progressed us onwards and upwards, which has made our position even more difficult for the next album. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, great point, great point. Where are we going to go? I mean, one yeah, one thing we haven't explored with Spike is his ability to create D-beat. He's one of the D-beat kings. Mm. We haven't used that much, so I think that's going to feature uh, 
on the next album nice. a few times, definitely. Perfect, beautiful. Um, all right, I, Zoom's going to kick me off because I'm uh, a cheap skate and I didn't pay for the pro. Uh, you're a standard 40 <laughs> minute man, are you? Okay, okay we've got two which, minutes left. Which is good two for you because I know you've got, <laughs> you've got a lot to go still. Um, yeah, last question. Uh, with the, you, You're an expert and you've been doing the war thing forever. What is one book, movie, something, I'm sure you've been asked this before, that you enjoy the most when it comes to a war theme? Is there anything that sticks out? Even what recent old. Oh my God. There's so many, so many, so many, so many that are kind of inspired me, you know, all the old classics. So they're always there, you know, um, the longest day is probably one of the ones that, uh, is, is the, yeah, the, the really great, the original one is great film. Um, but uh, that's, that's absolutely loads. Guns over, you know, yeah, there's, there's just so many. Uh, I, I could answer that question because I spent about 20 minutes answering that question. <laughs> particularly like, I do particularly like Apocalypse Now, though. That's a great all time classic. Platoon's another great one, you know. But yeah, uh, Saving Private Ryan, there's, there's loads of great what, great films, Dunkirk, lots of the new ones I'm talking about. But mm. yeah, I'm pretty much inspired by a lot of the older, older films that are out there. The, uh, the, 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 the um, the new film that's just won a load of awards as well, you know, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, yeah. the re remake of that. That's an incredible film to watch as well. So I recommend that if anyone hasn't seen it. So Good. I just saw that the other, night, the other day, incredible film. Um, so yeah, th yeah, War, the uh, en en enduring theme, which will always be there. The downfall of mankind, the he man's inhumanity. It's a terrible thing, but it is a great source of lyrical inspiration. So well, it's not Carl all bad. <laughs> all right I, I greatly greatly appreciate it man um i had one comment from a listener when i asked for some questions and then he just said tell carl this is from michael he said thanks for sticking up for what's right in a small extreme scene and we know we touched about that a lot already so thank you Good from man. michael and from that's everybody what, else that's what mike all the best thanks for your support we have less than one minute <laughs> left so i will say goodbye jason all right carl i appreciate it man good luck with this album coming out and i'll be waiting for the next one Cheers, buddy. I'll speak to you again in about 12 months. Sounds great. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, bud. That's no, so, buddy. Take care.